What's up guys, Bob Buskirk here at Think Computers and today I'm showing you the UEFI BIOS here on EVGA's Z170 classified K motherboard. Now this BIOS is pretty much the same as the one we saw on their X99 motherboard so not much has changed but we're going to do a full overview to give you a good idea of what it's all about. So when you load into the BIOS you'll be loaded on this screen here. So at the top of the screen you'll see some information. So you can see um, in you know it shows us our CPU multiplier in our BCLK all of that up here, our CPU clock. And over here, this will show you how many cores you have or how many cores are enabled for and that we do have hyper-threading turned on. Um, so that's everything over here. Now on this side, you'll see our memory. And you can see our two sticks of memory in here, two 8 gig sticks, um, making 16 total gigabytes running at uh, 2133 megahertz. And then we have our voltages over here for CPU and memory. On this side, this shows us, this shows us our PCI Express. So we have a single card installed, as you can see right here running at 3.0 and x16 speeds and then we have temperatures on this side so we have our vrm temperature and cpu temperature so that is the top that kind of gives you a basic overview of what's going on inside the system now our first tab here which is the tab that will load automatically first is overclock and this is where you're going to go ahead and set all your settings if you want to tune your system so um, what's nice is they have your target frequency up here. So you can see our target is set at, at uh, 4,000 megahertz or four gigahertz. We haven't changed anything. We have everything set on auto. So that would be what we're going for. Um, you can set your multiplier control. So, you know, auto and manual. If we go to manual, you can see you can set all of your multiplier, all the multipliers for all your different cores and all that fun stuff. Um, if you go down here, you can see you can set all your voltages, uh, your BCLK frequency, all that kind of stuff you can set here. So this is everything to do with overclocking, which is kind of nice, um, all on your main page here. And as you can see, if you select a setting, um, over here we have information. So if you're not sure what something does, you can get a little bit of information and read about it. If we go over to memory, this is everything to do with your memory. So you can enable XMP profile. The uh, memory we have installed does not have one, but um, you know you should be able to select an XMP profile if it does. Um, you can set your memory frequency and your voltages, and then you, in real time, uh, you can see your timing configuration and all of that. Uh, you know, so if you're looking to change the timings, you can do all of that in here as well. Under advanced, this is all of your main configuration. So this is everything to do with what's on the board. So if you go into CPU, this is, you know, you can enable uh, turbo mode, you can enable EIST, you can set the C states, you can enable or disable hyper threading, virtualization, um, virtualization technology for direct IO and active processor cores. So you can turn off cores if you want, you know, anything to do with CPU, you can go ahead and change. Graphics configuration. Um, you know you can in turn you can turn the internal graphics on or off um, i believe if it's set on auto it will turn the internal graphics off if you have a uh, discrete graphics card installed and if it's not it's automatically turned on um, so you won't have to change this if you don't have a discrete card installed pci express configuration this just shows you um, what's all going on with pci express so as you can see in our first slot we have an x16 gen 3 card um, and then you can actually set the speeds here too so it's set on auto but um, you can set it to gen 1 gen 2 and gen 3 if you need to do that with the specific card you have installed pch um, not much really to change here this just gives you information um, you know you can see uh, we're running z170 and the firmware version all of that SATA configuration, um, of course, this is everything to, to set up with your SATA ports. Um, here, you know, we can uh, enable or disable or set up uh, ACH, ACH, AHCI or RAID modes. You can go ahead and set all that up and you can see what we have installed. Um, you know, that's pretty much it uh, as far as, you know, the SATA stuff. USB configuration, same thing. Um, you can set your legacy USB support and what's all supported, and you can enable and disable each port on the um, on the board. So you can disable ports if you want to. Power management, um, this is just certain things. You can set dark mode on or off. Um, so dark mode, 
will turn all the LEDs on the board off. So this is pretty cool, especially if you're, uh, you have this PC set up in a case that has a window and maybe it's in your dorm room or even in your bedroom and those lights, those LEDs just get annoying. Um, so dark mode will turn everything off, even the power button, LEDs, everything. So you don't have any lights whatsoever. ERP mode, uh, so that is a uh, European Union standard for energy efficiency. And then you can turn, um, you know, sleep modes on or off, all that kind of stuff. Onboard device configuration, you can turn uh, the Intel LAN on or off, the Killer E2400 off, the three, the USB controller, SATA controllers, all your controllers, you can turn it on or off, and you can um, enable or disable your M.2s. Um, and if you are installing an M.2, um, this might not be enabled by default. So if you install your M.2 SSD, you might have to go in here and you know select one and enable it if you have to. Go out of there, Hard hardware monitor configuration. Uh, this monitors all of your different hardware settings. So you can see we have all of our temperatures here in real time and you can set your modes for your fans. So I believe, uh, let's do one that actually, oops. Here we go. So um, you can set your smart fan settings for your different things. So you can see that, um, you know, your different levels for your smart fans. So if a temperature gets above a certain degree, the fan will of course speed up and you can see the temperature settings in there. Um, and you can set the different, I believe, you can change these to smart mode or something else. Um, I believe so. So you should be able to change all these and you can set uh, the different fan modes. So if you want to do DC mode or PWM mode on the different fans, you can go ahead and set that too. So if you have a specific fan, maybe some fans aren't PWM um, or some fans are PWM, you can enable those or disable those if you want. And then down here we have our um, voltages here in real time. So 12 volts, all that kind of stuff, all in real time right there. And Intel Thunderbolt. So this board does have the header for Thunderbolt. And this is, uh, you know, if you install a Thunderbolt card, you can go ahead and enable this and get it up and running. Under boot, this is just all of your boot stuff. You know, you can turn everything off. You can turn the speaker. There is a speaker on the board itself, so it will beep when you turn the system on. You can turn that on or off if you want. Uh, quiet boot, fast boot, you know, you can turn all that stuff on. Um, you know, boot mode selection, of course, all that kind of stuff. You can go ahead and set up. And then finally, oops, and then finally under save and exit, this will allow you to save your changes. You can restore the defaults, which is nice. You can uh, load last save settings. One thing that I didn't see in here, while we have the defaults, there isn't like an optimized default. So it would be nice to see like an optimized defaults in here, um, but that's not in here. You have boot override, which is also really nice too. So if you're installing Windows from a flash drive, which I feel a lot of people are these days, boot override allows you to boot from that device once. And then when your computer restarts, it will go back to the hard drive where you've installed Windows. So you don't have to set your boot device priority to the flash drive and then go ahead and switch that back out after. Here you can just do it once and you're ready to go. Of course, you can save your profile, load profile from USB. Um, and you, this is where you can update your uh, firmware for the BIOS. So you just go ahead and do that and you can update the BIOS from a flash drive. It's really that easy. This BIOS is nice. Um, it doesn't have a whole lot of features like many other ones do but it, it does have everything that you need and everything's relatively easy to find. So everything you're doing with overclocking here, memories here, everything else is in advance in its own little section. Of course, everything for boot is here and then we can save and exit. Um, and of course, when we do hit save and exit, you know, it is going to go ahead and ask us. I, I accidentally hit that button a bunch of times. Um, but also you can go over here and hit F12 or I believe if you just hit this button, um, you can take a snapshot of the BIOS too. So you can save that to a flash drive if you're trying to save settings or something like that. So, or you just want a screenshot of your BIOS, you're able to do that. So this has been our overview of the BIOS here on the EVGA Z170 classified K motherboard. Again, this BIOS has been pretty much the same through X99 and Z170. But if you have any questions about this BIOS, or anything to do with it or if you're having trouble go ahead and leave it in the comment section below until next time catch you guys later